In this course, we will be dealing with ideal gas very frequently, so I think it's a good idea to review uh, what we mean by an ideal gas and what are the assumptions that we will be constantly uh, making use of. Uh, the first thing is uh, the ideal gas is a dilute gas. So when we think about real gases, in the limit where we have a low concentration, uh, it's a dilute uh, gas. That means we have a low uh, pressure uh, and therefore also low density. So what, what we mean by low density is uh, the number per unit volume or number density we're looking at. So we define N sub V is the number density, the total number of molecules and divided by the total volume. So this is number density and this should be very low. Uh, the second assumption is when you look at the gas molecules, they don't have any interaction between them. So we have a non-interacting non-interacting or what we call free molecules and um, if you look at the separation between these molecules so here I have some gas molecules that are uh, moving around inside the container and I define delta x, the distance, center to center distance between two molecules. If I look at the average value of this distance, so for all pairs of molecules that I consider, I take an average, then average value of delta x, this is average distance between molecules. Uh, this should be much larger than the dimensions of the molecules. So if I look at uh, the radius of a molecule, so this is the diameter, let's say. I consider the diameter of a molecule here. Let's call this diameter uh, D. That's the diameter. Uh, so if I look at the average distance between the molecules, uh, this must be much greater than the uh, diameter. So this should be much greater than D. Uh, molecule dimensions for example the diameter uh, and another important point is that am I going to consider quantum mechanics or classical uh, physics in describing these molecules this average separation between the molecules delta x uh, should be much greater than the de Broglie wavelength. What is de Broglie wavelength? It is Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the molecules. So this is uh, the figure of merit uh, to, to decide if you, if you are going to consider quantum effects or classical effects uh, so that quantum mechanical effects quantum mechanical effects are negligible so the in the de broglie wavelength h is planck's constant
it is 6.63 10 to minus 34 joule seconds and P is a linear momentum of the molecules it, so it's a mass of the molecule times its velocity b mv uh, so we have quantum mechanical effects negligible another uh, way to state this is basically we're going to use classical mechanics so these gas molecules are uh, subject to newton's laws of motion they behave like classical uh, particles so I want to stress that this assumption here uh, is basically going to imply that we have a point like particles so uh, these gas molecules are point like and therefore we will be talking about uh, point-like particles subject to Newton's laws of uh, motion but th the the force that they exert on each other is negligible because they are free molecules they are non interacting now when these molecules uh, come together uh, so it's going to be a very rare situation because I have a low number density but let's say that two molecules do come together, they hit each other, what will happen in this collusion? Uh, so we, we're going to see, uh, because of the low number density, very rare collusions. So there will be rare elastic collusions. These collusions uh, will be with other molecules or it could be with uh, the walls of the container all right now when I look at for example you can see here I have a molecule that's colliding with the walls of the container this is going to be an elastic collusion so what will uh, this imply in terms of the motion of the molecules well the elastic collusion means we're going to have kinetic energy conservation and momentum conservation all right so that's what elastic collusion means uh, now when we look at what happens in between collisions so you can see that these molecules are moving around in random directions but if you look at the trajectory of this molecule before hitting another molecule so this is going to be a, a linear path all right so the molecule is going to move on a line uh, until it hits another molecule and then it will move on a different line. So we're going to have uh, linear trajectories between collisions. And why do we have linear trajectories between collisions? because the molecules are free they don't uh, feel anything and uh, they don't feel any force from other molecules uh, as they're moving around so there's nothing that's going to change their path uh, in between collisions so we're going to have linear collisions uh, linear trajectories in between collisions um, so that basically summarizes everything I would like to say about uh, these uh, molecules. So uh, let's remind ourselves again, what are these assumptions? It's a dilute gas, low pressure, low density. We have a low uh, number of molecules per unit volume. The gas molecules are non-interacting, they are free molecules. And that is going to imply uh, when we have molecules uh, uh, moving in between collisions 
we're going to have uh, linear trajectories in between collisions. So this is actually a result of the freedom of these gas molecules. Uh, the, if I look at the distance between molecules, delta x, center to center distance, the average distance between the molecules is much greater than the diameter of the molecule or molecule dimensions. Uh, that means the molecules are like point particles, so they are going to be acting like points. So the volume that they occupy is negligible. So a single molecule occupies negligible volume. If I look at the average distance between molecules and compare it to de Broglie wavelength, it's h over p, it, I find that the, the separation is quite large compare, compared to the de Broglie wavelength of these molecules. So de Broglie wavelength is defined as uh, Planck's constant divided by linear momentum. The Planck's constant is 6.63 10 to minus 34 joule seconds. Linear momentum is kilogram meters per second. It depends on the mass of the molecule and its velocity, but typically we find that uh, this number is very small compared to average separation between molecules. And this is going to imply that we have, so this assumption gives us the following result. The molecules are subject to Newton's laws of motion. Classical physics, so we can use classical mechanics applies. All right. Uh, when the molecules have these rare collisions between themselves or with, with the walls of the container, all these collisions are going to be elastic so that the kinetic energy delta K will be uh, zero. Kinetic energy is conserved and momentum is conserved. Kinetic energy and momentum conserved in all the collisions with the walls of the container or with other molecules.